This is the arrow. We're going to take a look at how to draw that. First of all, so if this is on the instruction manual. So if you see that in Adobe Acrobat, you can take a look there. We're going to start off here by using a combination of polyline, absolute coordinates, relative coordinates, and polar coordinates, as well as distance constraints. Now, you might be used to working in with the mouse. This one is showing you how you can use the command line up here to enter in actual coordinates if you have specific distances. So we'll start off with curve. Now, you notice there is a line and a polyline. If you are used to AutoCAD, AutoCAD uses the polyline. That means it's a continuous line where you stop at one point, you'll continue drawing. This is the line, so that's just a single line. So we're going to start off with a polyline. This is going to be a longer line. Now I'm going to start off with my initial point, and I'm going to type in negative 11, comma, 0. Okay, so what that is, you can see where my mouse is. Click to set that point. Oops, I'm going to turn ortho off here for now, and also object snap. So you can see where that first point went at negative 11, comma, 0. Now my coordinates here are in millimeters. You can see the units down here. You can change those. This is just the default. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to type in for the next point, I'm going to type R minus 2, comma, minus 2. So you can see that up here in the command line. So what that is, is that is a relative point. That means I want to go 2 to the left and 2 down. So negative is to the left and negative is down on the x and y axis respectively. Press enter to set that point. There's my point right there. So if you want to move relative, you can use the R command. That's a relative movement as opposed to absolute. That was our first point, negative 11, 0. So I'm moving relative to that point. So you should know about absolute and relative coordinates. The next line I'm going to type, I'm just going to type in 8. Okay, so press enter. Now, what I've just done is I have said, now I am drawing a line of length 8, but I haven't specified where the end point is. Now, what I can do is if I click anywhere, I will have a line of length 8. So I'm actually defining a circular distance. Now, if you turn on this command down here, ortho, what ortho does is it locks you into 90 degree angles. Ortho is kind of nice. It will set you up in specific directions. And I'm going to click Enter. So now you can see my next point is still moving at 90 degree angles. Now, I want to go up and to the right. I can override that with the relative command. So R1, comma, 1. And you can see that that overrides it. So the ortho is only controlling the mouse. But I can specify my point and press Enter. Okay, so for the next point, I'm going to type R for relative, and I'm going to type in 11. And I'm also going to type in this symbol, less than. The less than gives me the angle. So let's say I want to type in and I'll, uh, 0. OK, so you can see that I went at an angle of 0. Now, one thing you have to remember whenever you're working in CAD is that CAD uses polar coordinates. So polar coordinates are the x-axis is 0 degrees. Vertically up on the y-axis, going counterclockwise, would be 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 
and back to 360 degrees. Now, if you have ever worked with geography or mapping, you'll say, but wait a minute, north is zero degrees, east is 90 degrees, and you'd be absolutely correct. We have two different systems. Polar coordinates are for mathematics, geographic coordinates are for maps. There are other systems as well. There's architectural systems where you can say uh, north 45 degrees of east, but how about we just move on. Now, for the next point, I'm going to type in 1 and use my ortho command to drag that straight down. Okay, and then my next point, I'm going to type R six comma two and that will take me back to the end and press enter all right and then i'm just going to press enter and that finishes my polyline command so there is my arrow now what can we do with this well i am going to make a copy of it there are a couple of ways to make a copy Come back to that in a second. If I want to make a copy, I'll go transform and copy. And now I'm going to grab it by a point. Whenever you want to copy, you want to pick a point to copy it from. For that, I'm going to make sure that my object snaps are on. So I am going to grab it. I'm going to click on this end point and I'll move up right here. And you can see I am still making copies. I'll just press enter and there we go. Now what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to take this and you notice that I only drew half an arrow. Well that's because I'm going to use the mirror command. Now a uh, mirror plane is basically draw yourself a place where you imagine a mirror, turn off ortho here, would reflect your object. So you can see my line right here, that is a mirror line. Now, I'm going to repeat that command. If you uh, right click, that will repeat the last command. That's a useful tool. Now I've selected my object, now I'm looking for a mirror plane. And the nice thing here is I already have the x-axis listed, so I am just going to click x-axis. And there we go. We flipped it over on the x-axis. Click to clear. There's my object. All right. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to take these lines and I'm going to turn them into 3D objects. So the first thing I'll do, I'm going to select my arrow. Now it's usually a good idea to join your lines together before you make something 3D. And double check, this is a closed curve. Whenever you want to take some curves, turn it into a 3D object, it's very, very important to check what, what your curve status is. Is it closed? Is it open? That's going to affect it. You'll find that out a little bit later. Okay, I'm going to switch out from my top view, so I'm going to double click on the word top here. Okay, and there's my arrow, and you can see this is all done in perspective. So now I'm going to take my arrow, I'm going to go to the solid menu and select extrude planar curve. Choose straight and you can see now, right now I have what's called a wireframe. I'll just double click on this to maximize that and I'm going to right click on this that zooms to extents. This is a wireframe model. You can see it looks like it's made up out of wires. If I switch to shaded mode, you can see, okay, that now looks like a solid object. Okay. Now, here's another thing I can do. I am going to take this curve that I copied. I'm going to do a surface and I'm going to do a revolve. 
Okay, so what a revolve does is this. I'm going to click on this endpoint right here, this endpoint right here, and you can see that it's actually spinning around in an axis. I'm going to choose the option of full circle. And there we go. Now I've got two arrows. One, to s one is just a flat that's been extruded. One's been revolved. There are other fun things you can do with this. Uh, once you've got your solid object, you can modify them. So for example here, I'll put a twist in this arrow. And maybe I'll take this one, transform, I will take that and I can bend it. Kind of a weird arrow now, but uh, looks pretty neat. So there's a, a quick little introduction to how to create lines from points. Take those lines, turn them into 3D objects, and once we have 3D objects, we can modify them.